Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again with a full review of the DJI Power 500 Portable Power Station. In today's video, I'd like to start with a quick unboxing just to show you everything that's included, and then I'll cover the specifications so you'll understand exactly what the product provides, but I want to explain why DJI built this specifically for drone flyers, because there are features inside here that will safely and quickly charge your batteries faster than any other portable power station on the market, and there's some leading edge technology inside the unit that enables that type of functionality, and I'll get into that in a minute. But let's get started with the unboxing. So when you first pop open the box, you'll find the Power 500. You'll find a heavy duty AC cord you can use to charge it at home. There's a three prong plug on the end. You can plug that into any standard wall outlet. The other end has a computer connection on it. So it's a really standard cable and that plugs into the front of the unit. Now using that, you can charge this unit the full capacity in about 70 minutes, which is outstanding because a lot of portable power stations with the capacity of this unit could take a couple of hours to fully charge. So knowing you can charge this in 70 minutes means if you're getting ready to head out on vacation and you've got one of those other portable power stations, you're sitting there in the kitchen charging that power station, delaying your vacation. With this one, you can basically plug it in, go get a cup of coffee, come back, and it'll be fully charged. Now, when you open the door, to where you're plugging that cord in, you'll see a switch on the top and it says 270 watts or 540 watts. Now, to fast charge this, you'll have it in the mode of 540 watts. And you might be thinking, why would I never have it in fast charging mode? Well, if you're plugging it into an outlet in your kitchen, there's a good chance there are other things on that circuit, maybe a coffee maker, who knows, a, a toaster oven, something else that's drawing current. And if you put it in fast charge mode, you might be drawing too much current from that outlet and you may pop a breaker. So you can knock it down to 270 watts. It'll still charge quickly, but you're not gonna be drawing as much current out of it. So if you can find an outlet where you can charge it at 540 watts, which is most of the outlets in your home, you're gonna be just fine. There are two other ways you can charge this using that connection on the front. You can charge it in your car. There's an accessory kit that plugs into the SDC port, which is the port above it right there, that'll allow you to charge it from your car. It takes a little bit longer in your car to charge it because you're not drawing as much current. You can also charge it from a solar panel. There's an accessory kit called an MPPT kit that actually connects to the SDC. You can connect it to a solar panel, drink in the sunlight, and then charge those internal batteries. On this particular unit, the Power 500, there's one more way you can charge it. These two USB-C ports right here on the top are bi-directional, which means you can use those to charge external devices from the internal capacity. You can also use them to fire electrons at the internal batteries. If you have a wall charger that's like 100 watts or 140 watts, you can connect a heavy duty cable between that charger and one of these USB-C ports on the front and you can charge the internal batteries. Now, that's gonna take the longest of all because you're only pushing 100 watts at it. Here you can push 540 watts at it. So you can do the math on that, but that's a great alternative alternative if you're on vacation and maybe you forgot the cord and you've got a big heavy duty charger with you, it allows you to trickle charge the unit overnight. So those are the ways you can charge it. Now the unit itself specification wise has 512 watt hours of internal capacity and that may not seem like a lot, but it's really perfect for a day of flying. It's also great for a couple of days of camping or if you're on a road trip with the family. Um, you can get bigger portable power stations and DJI makes one that's a thousand water. It's the Power 1000 that actually has 2200 watts of external power, but that one is bigger and it's heavier. And if you're heading out to fly, you want something small and portable. So 512 watts is right in that Goldilocks zone where it's perfect. It's enough power for a day of flying, charging your batteries, getting back up in the air, and you're not carrying a really heavy portable power station with you. This one weighs about 13 pounds, which again may seem heavy, but if you've got one of the larger drones, like maybe a Mavic 3 or an Air 3, and you've got a hard case and a bunch of batteries and accessories, that hard case probably weighs 10 or 12 pounds. So you can easily take this along with you, not a big deal. As far as the battery technology goes, that's another important distinction because now that you know how to charge it, that charge has to be held somewhere inside the unit. And it's really critical that you understand there are different battery chemistries on the market. Most of the portable power stations out there are still using lithium polymer technology, which is an older technology. It doesn't do real well in hot weather and cold weather. It doesn't hold a charge real long, but its biggest fault is that you can only charge it a couple of hundred times. So if you're using it a lot, you discharge it, you come home, you charge it, you head out the next day, you discharge it, come home and recharge it. You're only gonna get a couple of hundred charge cycles out of it. This one uses a different technology. It's lithium ferrophosphate, which is the latest battery chemistry in the market today. And what that gives you is really good performance in hot weather and cold weather. It holds on to a charge a long time, so you can actually charge it on a Monday for the vacation that starts on a Friday. It'll still have a full charge on it. But more importantly, it provides close to 4,000 recharge cycles. 
Now I'm gonna stop there for a minute so you can do the math in your head. If you're charging this thing once a day, that's well over 10 years of use and you know you're not gonna charge it every day. So it gives you plenty of life out of the batteries, which honestly is the most important part of the charger because you can't change those batteries, they're in there, that's it. So when the batteries are done, you're, you can't use the unit anymore. So having 10 years of use out of it is pretty impressive. And then the third part, which I think is where we're gonna spend most of our time, is once you've got that unit charged, how do you use that charge inside the unit to charge and operate external products? Well, typically there are three ways that any portable power station will deliver current outside the charge devices. AC, just like in your home, DC, like in your car, or USB, which is what you're using to charge most of your portable devices today. You've got a USB wall charger and you're plugging a cord in and you're charging those devices. So let's start with the AC. This unit provides two AC ports right there. By the way, they're both three prong ports, which is important. A lot of the portable power stations only provide two prong ports. And then if you're using something like this, you can't plug it in without an adapter. So having three prong ports is pretty important. Those two ports together can provide up to 1000 watts of external charging and operating capability. So you can plug a lot of different things into it and it's gonna work just great. You can also use those ports with all the other ports at the same time. As far as DC ports go, I'll leave that a minute till the end because I want to talk about this SDC port right here, which is the unique port. That's the magic of what this box provides for drone flyers. But let's talk about the USB ports first. So there are two flavors of USB, USB-A and USB-C. The USB-A ports are the older style, the bigger ones that we've been using since the beginning of time, it seems like, where you'll plug in that big connector to your charger, plug the other end into your device to start charging it. There are two of them on here. There are two USB-C ports on here as well, which is the latest standard of connection, which is the smaller connection. And that's used on all the modern technologies of the phones, the tablets, the drone batteries, the cameras, pretty much anything you've bought in the last two years, you can charge off a USB-C. With the two USB-A ports, you can deliver up to 24 watts of external charging and operating capabilities. And with the USB-C, each of them individually can deliver 100 watts of external power. And that's absolutely amazing because most portable power stations on the market Maybe it'll give you 30 watts out of a USB-C or 60 if you're lucky, and maybe only on one port or maybe combined across all the ports. With these, you've got 100 watts per port, which means you can charge pretty much anything you're bringing out in the field that uses a USB-C connection, including gigantic tablets, laptops, drone batteries, whatever you happen to need to charge, you can charge through those USB-C ports. Two other important things are both our both sets of ports are quick charging. So the USB-A ports are QC or quick charging standards, which means when you plug something in that's got a QC compatibility, the port's gonna recognize that, it's gonna interrogate the device, it's gonna adjust the voltage and current throughout the entire charging cycle to quickly and safely charge that device. The USB-C ports are quick charging as well, but they're the PD standard or power delivery standard, which does exactly the same thing. So it'll look at, say, a drone battery, and if it's at 50%, it may have a higher voltage and a higher current that it's firing at that battery. As it approaches full, it's gonna back off on the voltage and the current, so it's safely and quickly charging that battery. So all four of those ports are quick charge ports. So that's the USB-C portion. Now, the part of this thing that makes the most sense for drone flyers is this SDC port right here, which is a software-defined charging port. That's a brand new technology. It was first introduced when a lot of the EV cars came out, where you've got those roadside chargers for the cars. All those cars use a different standard. So when you plug your car into that charger, there's a negotiation that happens between the computer in your car and that charger to tell it what kind of car it is, what kind of batteries are in it, what kind of voltage and current it can take to quickly and safely charge that car. That's software controlled, meaning there's a communication channel that happens between those two devices and they're negotiating exactly what's right for that car, which will be different than the next car that plugs in. It's certainly different than the next car that plugs in. Well, that SDC port does exactly the same thing. And from, from my perspective, that's the first time I've seen one of these on a portable power station. Now, the reason that's important for you is that becomes a universal port that can be used for a lot of different things. So for example, the first thing it provides is bi-directionality which means I can use a DC charger in your car, I can use an MPPT circuit with a solar panel, and I can fire electrons into the unit through that port. But I can also use that port as an outbound port, meaning I can plug in things like a specialized charger for my Mavic 3 batteries, which allows that port to adjust to the best voltage and current possible for a battery that I plug into this. Now, DJI's released a ton of accessories for this already. Um, you can use this for the uh, Mavic 3. 
they've released a kit for the Air 3 and a couple other drones, so you can pick these up as accessories. And I know a lot of people are probably wondering, why didn't they include those with the kit? Well, you may not be flying a Mavic 3, so why would you need this, right? So they've sort of sold this a la carte, and then they're offering these as a la carte accessories as well. But I'd recommend if you're flying the Mavic 3 or the Air 3, um, you pick up one of those adapters, and I'll show you why in a minute, because boy, it's a major difference. But more importantly, that kind of future-proofs this, right? When you think about it, if DJI is going to come out with new drones, they're going to come out with new battery configurations, new voltage and current, different chemistries, they can release an adapter for all those future drones, which means maybe the, I don't know, the Mavic 4, if there's such a beast being built, or the Air 4 being built, they're going to come out with a new module that connects it to this and allows you to fast charge those batteries. So I think there's a lot of possibilities out there. It wouldn't be a stretch to figure them coming out with adapters for other drone batteries or other technologies maybe to plug in there. So I like that SDC because it's a universal port. So let me show you how this thing works basically. So uh, I'll start off with this because, uh, actually let me, let me start off with, um, let me start off with the hub. Because if you're out in the field, maybe you don't have the adapter yet and you want to charge your, your Mavic 3 batteries out in the field, to do that, you'll need a USB-C cable, right? Make sure you use a heavy-duty cable because these are going to charge you either 65 watts or 100 watts. And a lot of times you have an older USB-C or USB-A cable that can only handle 15 watts or 30 watts. So you're basically choking that charging power through the cable by using an older cable. So you'll want to use a newer heavy-duty cable that can handle probably 100 watts to be safe. So I'll plug that in and I'll plug it into the unit. Now here's what's interesting. The minute I do that, that port is negotiating with the controller inside here, and it's pretty standard configuration. I can deliver up to 100 watts through the cable. This is only gonna take what it can take. Okay, so it's up to about 60 watts, because that's the 65 watt hub. So internally, it's negotiated 65 watts of charging power to charge those batteries. Now that's gonna take a long time to charge those batteries. Watch what happens <laughs> when I use the adapter. And this is where the beauty of this thing really shines. So I'll pop this into the SDC port right here. And I've got another battery. Oh, by the way, it's keyed. You can't put it in backwards. I just showed you that. So I'll plug it in. And again, there's a communication channel in here in addition to the charging. So now when I plug in this battery, it takes a second. It's thinking. I'll put it this way so you can see it. It's thinking. It's negotiating. It's saying, hey, I need a charge. I'm at a certain voltage and current. Send me the right voltage and current. Software to find chargers talking to it. Intelligence is going on. All of a sudden, it's going to start ramping up the voltage and current to get to a maximum that it can safely charge this uh, battery with. And right now we're up to 65, still going, 68. Now I'm not gonna tease you, but we're gonna be well over 100 watts of charging power through this SDC connection. And if you think about that, I've done the testing on it, you can charge this battery fully in about 30 minutes, which if you think about flying the drone, the drone's gonna be up in the air for close to 40 minutes. By the time you land it, I've got a fully charged battery ready to go. Pull the battery out of the drone, pop this battery into the drone, get back up in the air. Let that battery sit for a while, because batteries get warm when you're charging them, they get warm when you're using them. Let the battery cool down, pop it in this charger, and you can recharge that battery while you're flying that other battery. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Okay, we're at 141 watts. 60 watts, 140 watts. Do the math on that. It's over double the speed of charging. And it's not scary because that software-defined charger is negotiating. It's constantly monitoring the battery through the controller inside the battery. The controller inside here is flattering that battery. So DJI has built the perfect union of power and requirements to negotiate over time to charge that. So it's the same with the Air 3. It's the same with the other drones you're going to charge. Now, again, the best part about all of this is you can use multiple things simultaneously. So I could plug in these batteries at the same time. I'll put them up here just so you can see that they're charging. I could plug in, I don't know if I got my Air 3 with me as well. Let me plug that guy in. So now my Air 3 batteries are gonna negotiate and start charging. And the key thing to remember is that you can deliver up to 1,000 watts externally from this charger or from the power station, which means all of these can operate completely safely at the same time, and these USB-C ports are negotiating individually for these batteries and these batteries. So again, they're being safely and quickly charged. All right, so in, in addition to that, I can also plug in an external charger. Now, this is something you may wanna do because maybe you've got other products you wanna charge. So to do that, there's the external charger plugged in. Now again, I've got a total of 1,000 watts externally, but I've got three more USB-C ports on there that I can use. So let me plug one of those into the bottom port and I can use that to charge anything I've brought along that needs another charging. Say for example, my controller, I'll plug that in. 
and that'll start charging in a second and you'll see it come on come to life okay so now you're charging through that charger in addition to all the other stuff if i've got oh here's my mavic 4 or mini 4 pro batteries let me charge those i almost said mavic 4 there is no mavic 4. all right <laughs> let me charge these guys now Again, you're not going to plug in all this stuff at the same time, or maybe you are. I don't know. If you're on a camping trip and you've come back for a long day of flying with the family, maybe you want to charge all this stuff at the same time. But again, the beauty of this is that you've got a lot of energy inside the unit, and you can deliver it to external devices through all the ports at the same time. And the one thing I didn't mention, which I probably should have during the charging cycle, is remember when I told you in the morning you're getting ready to head out on your vacation and you've got the charger isn't charged and you want to get out the door as quickly as possible? Well, when you plug this into the wall, all of these ports on the front are active at the same time, which means you can not only charge the internal batteries, but you can charge all of your portable devices that you're bringing along for the trip at the same time, as long as you're not exceeding 1,000 watts. So it's got charge-through capabilities that allow you to deliver electrons to the external devices as well as the internal batteries. So that not only works at home, it works on the solar panel and it works in the car as well. So all of those just give you a tremendous advantage. Now, in conclusion, it's a great portable power station for anybody that needs power. So if you've got a, a home that loses power occasionally, maybe you're out in the country and you, you lose power every time a lightning storm comes through, it's a great little portable power station to charge your portable devices, maybe keep a small appliance running or two, run your coffee pot off of it if you're like me and like your coffee. It's also perfect for camping if you're heading out for two or three days of camping. It's the perfect device to charge all of your uh, gadgets out there in the field. Um, and it's, again, it's designed for drone flyers because you've got this SDC port on the front, which I promise you, DJI is probably working on a couple more attachments for that where they're going to introduce other features and functions through the SDC. But that's pretty much all I had for today. I think it's a wonderful product. I've used it for a couple of weeks. It, it's been flawless. It's just been working great. I think you're going to like it as well. So hopefully you found this review helpful. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy.